All right, there's not much of an agenda today. We know that Sean McChance is on PTO um, and Brian Stinson, who also has a lot of the issues associated with him and his duties, uh, were not able to attend. So I do not have anything in the open issues. Um, so we basically just have an agenda. Um, and one of the things I thought was important to discuss today and I, is communication improvement efforts, um, improving communication between the community and maintainers of some of the repos and vice versa, um, how we can communicate and just make sure everyone updates tickets, you know, and issues and puts valid comments in, um, simple things like that. We are really good on the mailing list side as far as operational side. Fabian does a great job of letting people know when there's gonna be maintenance and other things, but there's also areas that we can probably improve on. Um, so I just wanna bring that up and get people's thoughts in regards to some of the things we could be working on in the future. Um, we're not gonna solve everything today, but at least getting some ideas out there. Um, I'm going to earmark about 15 minutes for this discussion. Uh, don't see anything. Yeah, so let's earmark 15 minutes for the discussion. Um, then David and I have been talking about metrics because I really would like to get that success document going and finalized finally. So David is gonna talk about some of the metrics that he's been working on recently. And then I'm assuming Troy, you are the any other business of 10 composes? Or, is, or did that get lot left on the agenda? Uh, I could talk I about that, but, uh, but yeah, I didn't put that on. Okay. It's from last agenda. Oh, okay, then I that's my bad. I forgot to remove it. All right, so let's talk about ongoing communication. What are some things that we can do to help improve things? Um, I know we have the blogs, we have the mailing lists. Um, we now have, thanks to Davida, the Ask the Board Matrix channel that nobody has ever posted in except us when we first joined it. Um, but at least, you know, we as a board are trying to be available to people to answer questions. Um, I know we haven't had the office hours in a couple months. I think travel has really influenced that and the fact that we didn't get emails out saying we're going to have it um, or we were all traveling. Those of us who normally attend the office hours were traveling on that those Thursdays. So we haven't had an office hour in a while. But on the other side of things, we also were the only ones who ever attended them. So they kind of became improv work sessions and chat sessions. Davida? Uh, yeah, I I personally never really found the office hours terribly valuable because, as you said, nobody ever shows up. <laughs> uh, and like in generally, my experience, office hours are really hard to pull off because either nobody shows up or it becomes like a working session. And like, unless it's something that's attached to something else that people organically go and like then can ask questions, it's hard to have it as a standalone thing. Um, but like more generally, I think one area where we haven't quite figured out how to do things well uh, has been the uh, giving people good channels for contributing to the project and then setting expectations around their contribution and how this process is gonna work. Uh, now, for wider context, this discussion was prompted by there were a couple of instances where people submitted MRs on GitLab, and then the maintainer either ignored them or merged an equivalent one, uh, or like there were miscommunications around this stuff. And like ignoring the specifics of those cases, which I don't think are relevant, I think in general, having better clarity around what are the expectations for our find one to contribute to straight into a package. What can I expect? And on the other side, what should the maintainer of the package do to make sure people have a good experience there? 
because uh, right now I don't think there's any kind of SLA around reviewing MRs or things like that. I don't think there should necessarily be an SLA, but I think having a general expectations that as part of like your duties as maintainer of a package is engaging in the channels that are available, which includes GitLab and Jira and whatever, should probably be a thing. Josh. Yeah. Josh. Um, no, I'm glad we're talking about this topic. Uh, not. I want to go back to Amy's first question, and then I'll I'll go to what you're talking about, Davide. Um, I don't think our communication problem is a lack of channels or methods, right? Um, it's that we don't, as a board or as a project, have something coherent to actually communicate. So, if we're going to figure out what we want to talk to people about. Uh, there's a couple of different ways. Like we can decide as a board, what are the things that we think are important that we should be talking about as a project? Um, I, I would encourage us to do that. There's also like we could ask Neil or we could ask other community members, what actually do you want to hear about from the board? Um, office hours was kind of an opportunity for that, but I agree with you all. They've been limited in utility. Uh, but like to the point on, and this is where I'm going with, um, what you're saying, Davide. If we're looking at the project and where we think people should be contributing uh, and where we should be setting expectations, I don't know that stream is actually the place we should tell them to go contribute uh, because it is actually very hard to do a contribution to stream and get it incorporated just because of the nature of the actual deliverable. But we can tell them, go focus on a SIG, go do cool, interesting things on top of or around stream. Um, it's not to say that we shouldn't set expectations for stream itself, but like if we're trying to grow the project in a direction where people actually have more freedom and opportunity to do really cool contributions, SIGs are far better than stream itself. Is that, I don't know. I mean, that's that true, anybody? but the reality is that people do want to contribute to stream as we've, as we've seen. So we need to have a, we need to have a good process and good channels for that. And I agree with you that the bar is definitely higher and it can be harder. But we should all we should do all we can to streamline the process and make sure people have a good experience, or at least that they understand what they're getting into when things are happening there. Um, the, yeah. The the most realistic way to do that though is to tell them to open an issue in Jira and have a conversation with the maintainer. Like, I get that Jonathan submitted a patch for a CVE, and that is important, and I'm glad he did so. But that was an embargoed CVE, and the work was already done internally, and the maintainer just pushed what he already had completed, right? Like and that's it, totally fine. But I, I, I didn't particularly want to bring up the specific case because it's in the specific case doesn't matter. But uh, like in that case, something that in my opinion could have been done better could have been just the maintainer commenting on the PR uh, on the MR and just saying, "Hey, thanks for submitting this. We actually had this already sorted internally. I pushed it there," and I think that would have been fine. And I don't think anybody would have had any particular issues. And then even better than that would have been having that email that Brian sent afterwards up on a wiki somewhere that then the person could link for like, and by the way, here's how the process works and here's what you can expect to happen. Uh, I mean, we can ask Bex to go ask Red Hat to do that um, if we want to as a board. I don't know what they would say. But I still don't think that would actually be a really good experience. It, just a comment, like that's not a good experience because it's not setting expectations. That no, but it would be something. Like I can tell you, it's, it's better than good. nothing. But it's, it's not what you're gnarly at. when you get ignored. But like, and like, but that's case, my point. Like the the best way to engage in stream is to open an issue and have a conversation there rather than do the work up front and then get ignored anyway, even if you have a conversation. Like that's not a good experience. A, a comment after the fact saying you did all this work no thanks because i did it too i don't know it just i i understand what you're saying i think um it's the order of operations that we're disagreeing on okay i, I think just adding something on that is i agree but i think the idea of having a, a guideline on reminding people like if there's a major cve uh, 
We expect Red Hat to work on it anyway, so please open an issue first before contributing code directly would be something we can put in the guideline, for example, you see, because uh, like uh, we know we know how the CVE process work. I mean, I've been frustrated by submitting patch to Red Hat and getting overridden in the past, uh, not even before stream. And so I know now, but maybe some people from the community don't understand the whole process. So maybe document it, as, as David said, in, in some kind of guidelines for major, like, a group of things that you should do is like if you want to discuss uh, and commit code maybe first talk to the mainer open a ticket is is a good guideline for me that we should write down okay i'm going to put a hold before anyone else talks because i do want to agree with all the points here so it sounds like we need to go back to our document our documentation and onboarding which we've been talking about forever we need to do it um things like a process of if you notice something as Josh said, open an issue, have a discussion. In the case of a CVE, please note, I mean, just putting that to this out there, if, if Thomas, was, Thomas was right and people don't realize it, in the case of a CVE and maybe worked on internally, um, please open an issue to determine, you know, we can't answer it, but at least, you know, you've notified us that there's an issue. We could be working it on the background. I do think it wouldn't be hard for us, and we take this back to Red Hat, and we have like two sentences of, thank you for your contribution. We were already working on this as an embargoed CVE. We have included it here. Boom, done. Okay, um, Troy was next, then Neil, then Bex. Troy, volume. Mute, yep. Uh, I, I just want a second documentation that has gone over and I'm looking and I don't see anywhere on our site that has anything even close to this, what we want to say. Um, but that was also what I wanted to say is part of this thing, Josh is totally correct in that they need to open an issue. And I think Neil knows this because he's actually done it because the merge request cannot be merged without an issue attached to it. So that's just actually something that has to happen. But beyond that, yeah, we need to document it. Um, do we have an issue open for this, for documenting how to do this? Um, we do have a half day doc days plan for Flock. Um, okay. And I do have some items related to this in the face-to-face -face for the board. Okay. Then Where I'm, are you I'm still done. going or are we on to Neil? Move on. All right, Neil, you're up. How do you expect to provide a good experience with communicating via issue trackers? Because that's already pretty bad too, to put it bluntly. Like um, most of my reports go completely ignored for months on end. Um, and I'm doing the right thing. And actually I have learned that if I don't do the work on top of filing an issue, I get nothing ever. So pick something. And you can't just say, okay, don't make a don't make a change and file an issue and wait for communication when no one ever communicates. You can't make that expect you can't say that and then be surprised when people go and file to do the work anyway because no one's saying anything. Like if you're going to say that Jira is the way that you need to interact with people, which by the way is a crapshoot because of the fact that Jira accounts deactivate on 90 days of, of inactivity, which is extremely irritating for other reasons. But as long as you're going to do that, then you're going to have to say that you have to have an expectation with people internally that they have to respond to a ticket in a timely fashion because ignoring issues is not okay at all. Can I, I know I didn't raise my hand and Bex has his hand up. Can I respond to that one though? Bex, are you okay with that? Very okay with that. Okay. Okay. Um, Neil, I totally hear what you're saying. I agree, which makes me go back to my point. I don't think we should be encouraging contributions to stream. I just don't. Uh, it's a bad experience. There's very little control that anybody other than Red Hat has. And I would rather us encourage people to do stuff in SIGs. And if they want to contribute to stream, they can. But I don't know that we can do anything other than ask Red Hat, please improve the experience for it, which 
has not actually materialized since it's existed. And what's the point of stream? What was the, the point, point of stream is to have an open access. Like, this is my opinion. This is not anybody else's opinion. The point of stream is to see RHEL get developed in the open, get access to it before anybody else has it. And that's about it. Like, you can use it. You can consume it. You can build on top of it. But contributing to it, like, it's very few and far between. Um, and I don't know, maybe Red Hat has a vested interest in actually improving that, but I haven't so, seen it yet. So your opinion and what we have been told over the past four years are 100% contradictory because a big part of the messaging from the very beginning was the reason we're retiring CentOS Linux and doing CentOS Stream was because nobody was helping with the core project. And moving to CentOS Stream opens an opportunity for people to contribute to the core project. That was an, a metric that people, that Red Hatters, you and others, uh, have told me over the years was something that they cared about and mattered. And that is a big part of why everyone keeps complaining about how poor the experience is about contributing to it, because your actual metric is people trying to contribute to Stream that aren't Red Hatters. So what are we supposed to do? I am not aware of any actually measuring that metric at Red Hat. I'm I'm telling you like my opinion and my observation. Right. I'm not saying you're wrong. That. I'm I not do. saying the messaging has been different. I agree with you. I'm saying the reality is the messaging and the experience do not match. And we as a board need to figure out what we want the experience to be and what we are actually in control of. Sure. I'm just saying that like what we're being told by the 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 big shadowy red hat on the background and and what we're talking about here and what you're saying all don't agree at all i yes i agree with what you just said <laughs> yes and i am very frustrated because this has been four years of this i also agree with that all right let's let bex go and then davida um and first of all i apologize you may hear amazon story time in the background um I uh, I think that there are a lot of elements here that are coming out as a result of continuing to evolve the way that Red Hat makes product and the way that we are trying to open up processes. I think it's important to pick up on something that Josh said, which is that CentOS Stream is an amp, you know, is a predecedent to it, it comes before RHEL, and the changes that are made in it are directed at RHEL. And I think when Red Hat opened all of this, we were hoping we could have a wide open door. But what we have learned is that we continue to have to focus our efforts on the changes that are going to matter to customers and partners first. And so I think that's some of the reason that you see some of the communication pattern, which is not ideal. But the other side of this is that we as Red Hat have continued to maintain that if you're looking to run an operating system, in production, this may not be the operating system for you. And that if the CentOS project wants to produce operating systems for production use from their perspective, that is a great opportunity for SIGs. I would say it's not a terribly interesting one to just make an operating system. What's way more interesting is the work that goes on in like automotive virtualization and hyperscale. But we're going to continue to see patches and conversations that are driven around where are we going with rel and an opportunity the board does have is to find a place for these patches to land that are stagnating or for whatever reason are not yet able to go into rel and then to turn those into something that the board wishes to promulgate forward i don't know that stream is going to be that vehicle for everyone I'm going to take a little bit of umbrage with some of what you've said, Neil, not because I think you're wrong, but because I think you have grossly exaggerated some components of the messaging. But I'm also going to tell you up front, the messaging has been vague at times. And um, I don't think I'll get in trouble for saying this this way as the voice of Red Hat, but that's kind of in our playbook. Um, we like vague. Um, and, and so... I think this is telling us that we've reached a point in this evolution where, as a project, we need to be thinking about what is good for the project 
And CentOS Stream is an amazing base to build things on. And this project has amazing opportunities from that. But trying to drive CentOS Stream without driving RHEL, which is what Red Hat does, they drive RHEL, is going to continue to lead to these kinds of frustration. Um, to be very direct about it, I don't think a line in a doc set that just says CVEs are hard to submit, yo, is going to cause uh, someone who comes up with a different kind of a patch that may not understand some of the implications that Red Hat sees on that patch from a business perspective, where that engineer is blocked from having that conversation until they've run it through a couple of layers of product management. Like there's a lot of things that go on that cause people to look like they're making bad communication when it was never anyone's intention. I would rather see the project adopt a stance of saying, this is where you can be amazingly successful in making contribution. Um, that just feels more logical. I hope that wasn't too much of a ramble. I didn't expect to be sitting listening to Amazon Storytime. All right, Davida. Um, so I think we we probably need to be clear in distinguishing between the different types of contributions. I think you're absolutely right, Vax, that we cannot have an expectation with users that somebody can submit a MR that drives major design changes that will flow into RHEL. I don't think that was ever part of the bargain, and I think everybody here understands that, but I don't think necessarily that drive by contributors meant as a statement of fact, no, not as a judgment, understand or know that. So I think if you want to drive change in the ecosystem, that's work you have to do in Fedora, that's work you have to do in different ways, that's definitely not work you do in stream. What you can do in stream though, and what people want to do and routinely try to do is submit things like bug fixes or things here and there that are broken that are likely bug fixes for stuff that's broken in RHEL too, most of the time, or, or Setting aside the CV thing, which I agree, I don't think the CV stuff is, is thorny for various reasons, but I think there is an opportunity here for getting people a good path for submitting things like bug fixes or things that aren't major design changes. Uh, the other thing that I see people want to submit here and there is things like rebasing a package. And that's that's not the kind of thing that can go through NMR, but that is the kind of thing that can go through like having a discussion in JIRA or whatever. Um, but the, the main type of contribution that I I see myself wanting to make most of the time to stream as like NMR and GitLab is something is broken in this package, here's a fix, or uh, you forgot to backport a patch, or this patch you backport is broken, or things like that. All right, Josh. Yeah, um, I actually, so I have an idea on that, Davide, but I wanna make sure that I'm clear. This entire meeting, I'm speaking with my community hat on, not my Red Hat uh, hat on, and so, I just want to make sure everybody understands that. I wear lots of hats, sorry. Um, I think it's actually really interesting. I would love to know when we say people, who those people are. Um, I know, you know, clearly Jonathan has tried this a couple of times. Um, I feel like at this point, he kind of knows the, he knows the, the problems that we have, um, but ignoring Jonathan, why wouldn't we enable a SIG to just take these MRs and build them and provide a different repository with them included? Like, why couldn't we do that? That seems like it would be a healthy thing to do because then users get to contribute to a space that actually produces something they can use. Um, people who are not contributors but users can use this and get those fixes or whatever the case may be, experience on them. And then Red Hat can actually get value out of it by saying, oh, look, th these people over here, like the mass of the user base isn't sitting on top of stream proper, it's sitting on top of stream plus. And maybe we should start pulling some of this stuff in. Maybe we should pay attention. Um, I get that that's a lot of work and activity, but that seems like the kind of contribution that we would want to do. Am I wrong? I personally love this idea. Um, and we have kind of suggested it for the doc. Um, I think it was Pat then Davida. Yeah, I mean, I think that idea is fantastic with some polymorphism problems. Um, it's okay. You've got this patch. I love this patch. We're gonna kick the NVR of this RPM to what so that it installs, and then 
you know, my patch is garbage. And then Davida fixes a different thing in a different patch. And is like, hey, look, this thing works. But he also gets path broken patch in there. And I don't know how to uh, do that. Is that yeah, I mean, you're, you're describing the work that goes into creating a distribution. Yeah. Right? And if that's what people want to contribute to, that's the work that has to get done. So what you're describing, Josh, is effectively what we're doing in hyperscale. Um, it, I know. it is yeah. pretty much what we're doing. The problem with these and what I, with my hyperscale hat on, the reason I won't stop to end this stream is because the most, you what you want to maintain is the least amount of delta possible. So when when I'm doing backwards in stream, I usually backward from Fedora and I keep the packages as close as possible to Fedora. If I need conditionals to enable stuff for EL, I'll try to get the conditionals merged in Fedora. Likewise, if I'm branching from stream, because sometimes the Fedora package isn't appropriate, and I find things that are broken, I really want those to land in stream. Because the worst case scenario here is that you end up with a lot of like tiny divergences that then at the next major branch point, you have to reconcile. Uh, also, obviously, for every package you have, you have to keep tracking, keep tracking whatever your stream is. And like, now you were asking about who, who are the customers of this. The customers are the six. The customers are the rebuilders, and the customers are people that either run stream or make products on top of stream. And I mean products in the like projects, like not necessarily commercial sure. products. So that's that's roughly the audience you have here. I do not expect random user that runs stream at home to send them ours to stream. Although if they find something broken and they want to fix it, I don't see why they wouldn't do that. Like it, it is an option. Um, like, I think we just have to be clear in like, these are the kind of changes that can go into stream. This is how they go into stream. And then once we are clear on that, then we then that's the point where we need some kind of commitment from Red Hat on. But then if somebody submits a thing, somebody will look at it eventually. And it doesn't, I don't want an SLA, but I would like, I would really like to have some kind of like agreement that part of your job as a maintainer is also to look at this stuff from time to time and like, Act professionally in your in your engagement with the community there. And if the maintainer then doesn't care or doesn't want to do it, he can also reply, "No, this is this is not something we want to keep in stream, and that's fine." But then at least people know where they stand. Yeah. Um, again, we can ask Red Hat to, to figure something out on that front. When I describe my idea. Uh, maybe I needed to add a little bit more detail. So like Hyperscaler is already doing it for the most part, but Hyperscaler goes a little bit above and beyond, right? Like you guys rebase to upstream system D. Mm -hmm. and like that. If stream in and of itself is lacking fixes uh, or backports, uh, things that would be acceptable from a an enterprise operating system standpoint, not RHEL, but like a general enterprise operating system standpoint, why wouldn't you have a common base with these fixes included that the SIGs build on top of? Like, it would be telling if the SIGs pivoted to using this Stream Plus, which is a terrible name, but you know what I mean, uh, as their base instead of Stream itself. Like, that would be an outcome that would open eyes, uh, I think, in other spaces. And yes, it is work, but that avoids a little bit of the divergence problem because now it's not vert SIG and auto sig and hyperscaler sig all individually carrying their own unique changes and fixes it's you have a common stream that is on top of stream the SIGs sit on top of that now you have a, 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 a carrot to to dangle to say like if you really want engagement we're doing this work over here you can make it better and we don't have to do that anymore but lacking anything like that right now it just looks like streams working fine uh for people who want to build on top of it and they're building and everybody's happy, but that's not the case. Like I'm hearing that's not the case, right? So what can we do to show that's not the case beyond just saying people need to talk to us? And we need to talk back. Yes. I mean, I think that's important. This needs to be a two-way street and we've gone longer than I had intended this conversation, but I think it was a really good conversation to have. And I wish you were coming to Rochester, Joy, Josh, because I'd really like to continue this. Um, maybe we can figure out a way of dialing you in or something. But I think you're yeah, I'm, I'm open to doing that. Uh, okay. I just can't travel. Okay. All right. Um, if anyone has any last comments, raise your hand. If not, we will move on to the metrics.
Okay. I the, the only thing I would say is I I think in general what you're describing of having like an in-between stage that has set a staging place is something we could build considerably. Like yes, it could, it could be a SIG and it could be something that other SIGs build on. We could do that if we wanted to. It's just work. Uh, but like the work is probably not the hard part here. I think the hard part is less the work and the like policy side of these. And then the how do you do this in a way that then long term leads to a maintainable product because the to be absolutely clear i think the failure scenario here would be that this becomes effectively a hard fork upstream and i think that would be a really bad outcome for everybody involved yeah definitely and that's something i personally why. do not want to happen yeah well, i mean we effectively have that already that's what alma's doing that's that's alma right like that's a hard fork sure but we're not talking about alma here we're talking about three. Like but the like, rebuilders can do whatever they want. That is that is a different. But it, they're not a rebuilder, different. right? Like if you actually look at what Alma's doing, they're taking Stream. They're they're basically trying to be a rebuilder, but they're using Stream as sources. And if they're going to get the gravity, then it's going to suck any kind of contribution away from the CentOS project, and it's going to go to Alma. Right. Like where else are you going to go if you're not getting the fixes you think are important? because we're not putting in work and we're not enabling SIGs to work together to do that in the project itself. And Alma's doing that by their backboard so, and things like that. Like, So what you're saying is that we should work to enable these to work better within the project. <laughs> well, yes. and it makes sense. It's kind of the, this, the talk I had with the docs folks of the made us a fork that we could go ahead and take their docs, we could add to it their docs, we can make their docs, and they were interested in taking things back. So if I'm reading this right, Josh, you're saying we have our stream, and then we add, we make a repo called, again, bad word, stream plus, and we make some of those changes in stream plus, but only those changes that need backporting or other things. And then we somehow build it together and we make available for the SIGs and for users, Stream Plus. Yeah, and again, like if if the ideal outcome here is that's a short term thing and it eventually gets merged into Stream itself, that's great. We can we can work with uh, Bex or whoever the liaison is, uh, depending on the time frame that's all involved, right? Um, to highlight, like, hey, look, we have all these fixes here. We've run them. The SIGs are using them. Here's some data. Do you want to merge this stuff, right? Because um, I agree, like a hard fork sounds bad, but I feel like uh, right now we're kind of stuck between Red Hat isn't responding, the project isn't doing anything, so what can we actually do in the absence of Red Hat doing the thing we want them to do? That's where I'm at, right? Yeah, I I can see something... I could see something like this potentially working if we frame it as a space for everybody to iterate on and then have this provide kind of a unified front to get yeah. changes back into RHEL and kind of unifying the, the work of getting the changes merged back into stream. Um, I only see this working though if the changes eventually do end up into stream because again, if this ends up being another fork, then it's just, we just, done twice the work for nothing again. <laughs> Amy, I know we want to move on. Can I ask you a question though, Davide? Do you view the hyperscaler SIG as a fork? Because I do. No, not really. No, we don't view it as a fork at all. By design. It's an offshoot repo, which is what I was saying. If something needed some tweaking, we have it, an offshoot repo, not a complete fork. Of it's stream. meant as an overlay to be used on top. And like there are parts of it that replace major components, but especially the stuff that is in the main repo is specifically meant as a drop-in replacement for stuff that is in EL. Okay, that's that's fair. And I don't, I guess from my perspective, whether it's a layer because you're rebasing components or it's a layer because you're fixing bugs, like it's still just a layer and you're going to continue to have this layer indefinitely forever right and i think we're all worried about the stream plus layer growing over time and having so many different changes that now it's becoming untenable to merge it back to stream that that would be a bad thing i agree but mm -hmm. to start it's still a layer no right? but i think you're missing the point the stuff that's in hyperscale is there because we want to maintain it like 
we want to maintain the data system D in hyperscale. There is no expectation that this would ever be in stream or in red. It doesn't make sense. Right. And we, we as hyperscale, we have the expertise and we have the willingness to maintain that. And it's like part of the thing we do. And what I'm uh, saying is for the people who want to contribute to stream but can't, if we give them a place to contribute, they want to do that work, they can continue to carry that layer. Yes, but people don't want to maintain a one line patch to fix a bug in RPM. Like that's not a thing people want to do. That's just a bug fix that people want to get in a place and then move on. Yeah, but wouldn't like, the idea be that either that one line patch, and I'm I'm also now delaying us moving on, <laughs> that one line patch becomes either part of stream and then part of rel, or a fix comes into stream that is no longer needed, that one line patch, so it's no longer in plus. So it yes. doesn't need to be maintained. Um, yes. And those would be the good outcomes. The bad outcome yes. is this doesn't get merged into stream, but it is still broken. So it's still something that's desirable. And then someone has to maintain it for the foreseeable future. Right. But at that point, we're enabling our users and our contributors to solve their own problems. And as a project, we're providing them the space and cover to do so. Right. Like it is the thing that we can control right now. And so if Maybe. we think it's a bad idea, I'm totally fine saying this is a terrible idea. Please don't do it. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's. Uh, yeah. I think there are interesting implications of this that mm, you may want to think. You may want to think about what you are asking. Um, I know exactly what I'm asking. I'm asking for the contributors who want to contribute to have a space to contribute and carry their work forward. I don't, what I'm not asking for is drive-by one-line patches. So what if someone starts doing this but for security updates? They can do that. And then as soon as stream updates with an actual fix, it'd get dropped. No, it wouldn't. That's the thing. There because... is no guarantee that somebody who has forked a package and has built it would then drop it afterwards. That like ultimately what you have created is a level you, you've created base inertia. So if a package has been forked and then built, there is not really an uh, there's not really a factor. To push them back to dropping it afterwards for hyperscale most of the time we drop it because after something has been reconciled because i look at it and say we should drop it but that yeah. doesn't mean everyone will do that Especially but then why would you let them do it so neil like the whole start of this conversation was we have people who want to contribute so if those people want to contribute and we give them a space to do so i would expect them to want to contribute at large indefinitely and if they don't want to do that if their form of contributions is one line drive-by patches that they throw over a wall why on earth would anybody take those because they're still valuable they're still but... val first of all they're still valuable but the second point is i'm saying that as soon as you've told somebody to fork a package first of all you've created a base amount of effort that one they will stay and maintain that part but two they now no longer have any incentive to follow centos stream core for anything Okay. As, as soon as a package is forked, that that relationship breaks. Okay. That's why it's that's why I don't really like that idea. Neil. Okay. Mike had his hand up. Bex had his hand up. We're just going to keep going on this, but we can also put policy in place that if something once something is in stream, it is no longer in plus. Mike, go ahead. You're, uh, you're muted. Mute. Thank you. I, had a, I think this is a really fascinating idea and conversation. Uh, thank you, Josh, for bringing it up. I, um, it's also a really hard thing to get right. And there's a reason why Apple has stayed away from overlapping the, the core. There's lots of reasons for that. Um, but we seem to be talking about SIGs doing this in general. And um, this almost sounds like it needs to be a new SIG to me, if it's going to work right. Yep. Um, and do we have, I guess, you know, if this is ever going to happen, I guess, you know, first step would be who wants to run that SIG. <laughs> do we have people really wanting, this would require a lot of work to get right. Um, so. All right. Bex, did you still want to talk? Okay, we may. No, I, think I, I don't okay. think I have anything specific to add. Okay, so I'm going to say 
the discussion on this matter is over for the time being because we are now at I'm on East Coast time, 3.43 p.m. So we have 20 minutes left. Um, and Davida, you were going to talk a little bit about the metrics we were looking at. Um, and it does kind of go, Neil, you mentioned the success doc. Well, the success doc is something that we as the board put together so that we could see progress. That was not a Red Hat thing. That was our thing. And we've been sitting around trying to get metrics. Um, we're still trying to get a hold of someone who is a data scientist to help us get metrics. But Dava has made an attempt and he's going to share those with us today. Uh, well, yes. Uh, Your efforts. The, the, there isn't any actual stuff to share yet. But so what I've been trying, this was talking from the previous conversation for what is worth. So what I wanted to see is if there's an easy way to get data on of the MRs that go into stream, what is the breakdown between Red Hatters, non Red Hatters, what is the rough time between the MR is open, the MR is merged, and in general, trying to get some data around that, because those are effectively the contribution stats for the project. Um, so I wrote a horrible Python script to dump this data from GitLab by abusing their API, uh, and it takes a few hours to run, because I assume that's right limited, but eventually it produces a six megabyte JSON file. Uh, and now I have the six megabyte JSON file, and I realized I haven't done any kind of data science work since college, and the only tool I know to use is Excel, which is not exactly the right tool for the job. So if someone here knows how to use Pandas or whatever, and like is good at taking, doing this kind of work, I'm happy to share with you the JSON file. Otherwise, I will like just mess around with it and see if I can get something useful out of it. Um, but I, I expected the data collection part to be hard, and it turned out to be pretty easy, which was nice. Uh, and ideally, I did it on GitLab because that was easy, but ideally we would do the same thing for like SIG contributions or whatever. Uh, I just didn't want to run this against Pagior because I know I would probably take Pagior down and that seems bad. Troy. Um, sorry, I thought we were actually going to be doing different metrics. I like that metric, um, but doing my Apple and Fedora things, I just noticed that there's actually CentOS and CentOS Stream metrics in the Fedora's stuff. Is anybody planning on doing anything with that? You mean the count name metrics? Yeah. Uh, I mean, those exist already. Uh, do you have ideas for what we could do with those? Well, I, I do my Apple graphs every six months. I was wondering if anybody wanted me to do CentOS graphs. We should probably do that. Yeah, that's a great that idea. We should do that. Story. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. I sort of thought when it was on the agenda, that's why I didn't expand on it. But, no, no, uh, no. It's it's an excellent idea. I would not thought about count me at all, to be honest. But yeah, we should totally do that. Uh, okay. Like, what I would like to see at some point is have it would be nice to have some kind of periodic blog post that we post where like the state of the community and we can talk about the economy data, we can talk about the contribution stuff, we can highlight major things. Because um, I would really like to counter the narrative that like Santos is dead, Santos is dying, that occasionally circles the news. And the best way to counter that is pointing at actual data, I think. So mm -hmm. that would be nice. Um, but yes, I have no idea what I'm doing personally. So if people know what they're doing, um, please help. Um, I, I'm used to the count me data, so I'm not necessarily sure I want to dive into your JSON. Um, but I'll see if I can get some, since I'm already doing it for Apple, for Flock, I'll see what I can do for. Cool. Uh, we would, we would really appreciate that. Thank so you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, that if we are done talking metrics, because it sounds like we have work to do on metrics, that is the last item we have on our agenda for today. Um, do we have any updates on stream 10? No, that apparently was le left over. We find the garden. Updated kernel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw there's a uh, one built out there. It's uh, 
610RC something or other that looks awesome. Yeah, there, there was there was a it wasn't a bug. They 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 were blocked and they were out of stuff and they've now been unblocked. So maybe the kernel will be updated more for 10. Um, this is putting on my central stream hat. I wouldn't consider it. Don't do production. Um, we are still, our team is removing and adding packages on a daily basis still. So, um, it is not ready for production. As someone that is qualifying against what you're making, I am noticing that, but so far it's been fine. Yep. <laughs> Okay, and I just noticed on the bottom of the agenda we have um, an executive session. Yep, so, Max says he's end up. Yeah. So Neil as the. I, I just. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say Neil. I, was saying, I just. Go ahead. I'll wait for you. <laughs> I, I just briefly wanted to address the multiple comments made by members of the board this evening about hats. Um, part of the reason that the role that I'm in was defined the way that it was, was so that board members didn't have to worry about shuffling hats around. Um, and I encourage everyone to remember that all members of the board, except for me, are here as individuals thinking about this project first. They may have day jobs, they may have other areas that they contribute to and are involved in. But my understanding is that is the, the persona, if you will, that shows up. I am the exception. Um, I don't get to say what I, Brian Exobeard, think all the time because I'm here representing Red Hat's interests and uh, its participation in the project as a, a sponsor, but also as a primary contributor to some elements of it. Um, so I was wanting to try and remind my board members, you don't have to worry about your hat shuffling jobs because we threw all the hats away um, and nailed one to my head. Uh, so, so do keep that in mind. Uh, and for those of you who are watching at home, the millions, you watch our YouTube. Um, I actually back channeled some people. So, there you go. Anyway, moving on. 